The Bible says that your great enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. That's 1 Peter 5, 8. Now look at the picture that the Bible gives us about the devil. He tells that he's like a lion. If you know anything about lions, number one, they're very vicious. And number two, they only attack the weak link. They never go after the strong. They go after the weak vessel. Now let me give you a little secret. The devil's not going after atheists. He, he, the atheist already belongs to the devil. He's not going after Muslims. He's not going after Buddhists. He's not going after people of other religions. They already serve him. He's going after Christians. We already know the truth. We have the truth. The devil doesn't want us to advance God's kingdom. The devil doesn't want God's plans to happen. So he's after me and you. But do not fear. I'm not, this isn't a video for you to get scared about the devil. No, nothing. No. Look what the Bible continues to say. First Peter 5, 9. Stand firm against him and be strong in in your faith. Remember that. Be strong in your faith. We're going to touch more about that later. Like I said, I'm not here to put fear into you. I'm here to teach you how to fight. I'm here to teach you what to do because Satan's going to attack. Satan's going to try his tricks to derail you, to do whatever he can. I'm not here to, to put fear into you. Listen, I'm a fighter. You don't go into a fight thinking you're going to lose. You don't go into a fight looking how big and strong the other guy is. That, that, that's You're already setting yourself up for failure. Prior to fight night, you've already spent months beforehand training, drilling, preparing, sparring, building up your confidence. You're ready to go so that when you show up on fight night, you're ready. You're not scared. You're bold. If anything, you're worried about him because of the beating that you're going to put on him. You're more worried about his health. Now, obviously, I didn't just go into the ring just ready to fight, ready to go do whatever. No, I did a little bit of research on the guy. I looked at, I, I searched him up. I saw, is he big? Is he small? Is, is he fat? Is he a heavy hitter to prepare for what I'm about to go up against to, to, to know what to work on? I didn't focus too much on him. I don't care about what he's doing. He, he, I, I just I knew a little bit. I focus on myself. I'm focusing on what I'm doing. I'm bettering myself. That, that, that's the secret. And it's the same against the devil. You know, look what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 2 11. Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. You're not ignorant of his tactics, of his plans, of what he's trying to do, lest he takes advantage of us. So, so we do know a little bit about him. I'll give you two things. Is he strong? Yes, he's very strong. Is he powerful? Yes, he's very powerful. And understand this, against just like this, we stand no chance against the devil. He will destroy us. He's looking for someone to devour. He does devour. The Bible says that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's very good at his job. He's a bad devil, but he's good at his job. But look what the Bible said. He's looking for someone to devour. The opposite is true. There's some people that are undevourable. There's some people he cannot devour. There's some people he cannot attack. There's some people he cannot win against. And that's what I want you to be. That's what I want to train you up to be. I want you to be someone that stands strong in the face of the devil and say, you can't touch me. You can't have my children. You can't have my family. You can't have my spouse. You can attack all you want. The weapon may be formed, but it will not prosper because my God stands with me. He fights for me. He protects me. He delivers me. Many are the afflictions of the just, but the Lord delivers me from all of them. In Jesus Christ, my name, that is your portion. So in order for you to stand strong against the devil, in order for you to fight against the devil, it's Jesus Christ. The difference maker between whether you're a devourable Christian over a non-devourable Christian is if you are rooted in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're watching this and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior or you're living far apart from him, stick around till the end of this video because I'm going to give you the opportunity to give your life to Christ. I'm going to give you the opportunity to reconcile your life to Christ so that the devil's plans cannot come to completion against your life. Amen. I want you to remember real quick the story of Exodus chapter 11, where the angel of death was going over house to house and killing the firstborn child. God gave an instruction to the Israelites. He said to kill the, kill the lamb and put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. And when the angel of death saw the blood of the lamb, he would pass over. That's why it's called Passover. You see, you learn something new. The angel of death would pass over that, that house and not harm anyone inside of it. 
They had the blood of the Lamb. That's in the Old Testament. What about the New Testament? What did John the Baptist say in John 1 29? Behold, he saw Jesus Christ. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Hallelujah. That's the blood that we have. That's the blood that the devil sees. And he passes over our house. And he passes over your life because he sees the blood of the Lamb. When you get covered by the blood of the Lamb, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The things that cannot be done against you, the things that God does for you when you are drenched in the blood, when you are covered by the blood, you need to apply the blood daily. How do you apply the blood? How do you stay in the blood? Remain in Jesus. What did, Je what did Jesus say in John 15? He said, remain in me and I will remain in you. If you remain in Christ, if you remain with God in communication with God, in communion with God, constant fellowship with God, right standings with God, you're not grieving the the Holy Spirit by the way that you live, God is going to protect you. God is going to keep you firm. God is going to keep you stable. God is going to keep you. No harm will ever come near you or your house. But there's only one problem. There's, why do Christians not go from glory to glory? Why are Christians so up and down? This is why. First, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, the Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight. That's the only problem. Look, you, you'll see witches, you'll see all them, you'll see these Satanists. What, what are they doing? They're doing their little recipes with candles, with blood, the pictures, they're doing whatever they do. They're doing their works to attack Christians. Well, watch Satanists, ex-Satanist testimonies when they come to Jesus. Their attacks, their goals were against Christians. Their goals were against the church to keep you stale, to keep you moving. Because listen... Prayer is a spiritual thing. Like I said, we walk by faith and not by sight. This, this, this is the point that I was getting at. Many Christians, they don't see what's happening in their prayers. So they give up. Friend, prayer is spiritual. When you're praying, the hand of God is moving. You're breaking chains. The th things are changing in the spiritual realm. The God is moving on your behalf through your prayers. Look at, look at what Jesus tells us to pray. Our Father who is in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus told you to pray these types of prayers. When you're praying these types of prayers, God is moving. Satan doesn't like that. Satan doesn't want you to do that. So he's going to keep you with doubts. He's going to keep you with distractions. Keep you away from prayer. Keep you away from God so you don't do that. And these ex-witches, you know, the, the reason why they were so successful, the reason why so many Christians are up and down, because they are doing their things, but they attach their faith. They attach their faith to it. They attach their beliefs. They see it. We don't see it. But th that's not a for to be discouraged. Because if you keep watching, if you keep watching their testimonies, they'll say this. Yeah, they put curses. Yeah, they put distractions. They put poverty. They put death. They put all this on Christians. But there were some Christians that they could not touch. They could not attack. They could not do nothing. Almost as if those Christians were undevourable. Hallelujah. But what's the problem? How come some Christians are devourable and some Christians are not? God is not the problem. You are the problem. We are the problem. We don't stay in communion with God. We don't stay in fellowship with God. We give up on prayers. The moment you give up on prayer, listen, when you stay with God, God protects you. He puts a supernatural hedge of protection. We're going to talk about that. But when you leave God, there's no protection. If you're punching bags, if you have gloves, that's your protection. You can punch as hard as you want. The moment you take those gloves off, you take the protection off, you're breaking your hands. You're not doing it the correct way. You need protection. You need to stay with God. You need to stay with Him. He's the one that's going to protect you. And honestly, that's spiritual warfare. It's staying with God, staying under His protection, staying living holy. Because think about it, all, all temptation is, all distraction is, is to keep you away from God, keep you lazy. Listen, you'll get temptations of laziness, so you don't do the work of God. So you're not spending time in prayer, so you're not... In in the word. These are all temptations that the devil's going to try to send on you. Why? Because you're praying God, your kingdom come, your will be done. You're doing kingdom advancement prayers. He doesn't want that. So he's going to send distractions. So that way you're useless in the kingdom of God. If you're useless in the kingdom of God, the devil can do whatever he's doing because he's the God of this world. That's what the Bible says. He's the God of this world. And if you're not doing nothing against it, he's, he's going to flourish. But that stops now in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because you are going to be raised up. You're going to stay with... Let, let, let me read this with you. Let, let me read this with you so that you can get convinced. Job chapter 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was blameless, upright, and one who feared God and shunned evil. 
He was a strong, mighty man of God. And this is before Jesus Christ. This is before the, Mo the, the, the law of Moses. This was, he, was, he was believed to be a contemporary of Abraham. So way before all this. And he already knew God. He knew covenant with God. He had relationship with God. And look what Satan tried. Chapter 1, verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Remember what Peter said? Look like a, like, a, like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour up and down the earth. He hasn't changed. He's been doing the same thing yesterday. He's been doing the same thing today. He doesn't change. We're not ignorant to his devices. He was doing the same thing to Adam and Eve. He did this. He tried it with Jesus Christ and he's trying it with you. But, but, but look, but let's keep reading. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Have you tried to devour Job? There is none like him on earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and shuns evil. So Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge of protection around him? He's basically saying, I tried. I already tried, but you're protecting him. Do you put a hedge of protection around him, around his household, his family, and around all that he has on every side? He protected him. God protected Job. God protected his family. God protected his possessions. He protected him. Why? Because he was with God. He was remaining in him, and God remained in him as well. Not only that. You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. God prospers him. God did all these things for him. Why? Because he was in communication. That is spiritual warfare. Staying with God, avoiding temptation, avoiding laziness, avoiding distractions, avoiding being useless, being stale, being stagnant, staying in the same place with God. You got to go up. You got to move forward with God in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Listen, I believe in spiritual warfare. I believe, listen, uh, binding and loosing, you do that stuff in the name of Jesus Christ. But real spiritual warfare is living upright. Living, living holy. L read Ephesians 6, 6, 12, where it talks about we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rules of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. He talks about putting on the full armor of God. What's the armor? It, it, it's, it's the belt of truth. It's Jesus Christ. The, what's truth? Jesus Christ. That's what the belt does. It holds everything together. You're standing firm on the foundation. The breastplate of righteousness. So it cannot attack you. It cannot penetrate you. You are righteous. The, the, the righteousness of God is yours through Jesus Christ. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You're moving the kingdom forward. Then you can't trip up. No weapon formed against you will prosper. You cannot trip up because you're bringing the good news to people. You're bringing everlasting peace to people. You're bringing supernatural peace that surpasses all understanding. That's what you're bringing to people. Above all, you're taking the shield of faith that quenches all the fiery darts of the devil, whatever he throws your way. It's faith in Jesus Christ, faith in his promises, faith in who he is, faith in what he has done. That's what protects you. That's what puts the hedge of protection over you. Faith in the blood of Jesus Christ that covers you so graciously. The helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That's how you fight against the devil. Well, well when Satan attacked Jesus Christ, not attack, when he tried to tempt Jesus Christ, how did he go? Was he, was he, was he running around slapping him? Was he yelling like I am? Was he? No, he wasn't. Was he throwing oil on the devil? No, he wasn't. It is written. It is written. It is written. Get to know the word of God. If you don't know the word of God, you don't know the promises. The Bible says that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. The devil's going to play you like, like a rag doll if, you're not, if you don't know the word. If you don't know your rights in Christ. If you don't know who you are, you don't know your identity in Christ. Listen. My battery's going to die. So I want to wrap this up. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you got to make things right. The Bible says that Satan is the God of this world. You see it in the music. You see it in the movies. Everything's all satanic. Everything's all this. Listen, are you tired of, of, of repeating your life, of being defeated by the devil? Are you tired of all these drugs and alcohol, of meaningless sex? Are you tired of depression? Are you tired of all this ungodly things that are overwhelming your life? All that gets gone in the name of Jesus. The moment you accept Jesus Christ, all your pain, worry, you will get delivered. That's deliverance. You are being transported. You are being translated from the kingdom of darkness where sin, death, 
Everything reigns to the kingdom of light where there's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, goodness and self-control, faithfulness and self-control. That all becomes yours. That all becomes yours. But only if you are a child of God and if that's you or you want to or you did know Christ, but you want to make things right and you're tired of being serendated by the devil. Now is your day. Repeat after me. Say, God, I come to you in Jesus name. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me. Cleanse me by your blood. Thank you for the sacrifice on the cross. I believe that you died. I believe you were buried. I believe you rose again on the third day. And I believe you're coming back again for me. Lord, set me free. Deliver me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me a hunger for your things. A hunger for your word. A boldness to preach the gospel. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Amen. Listen, hit me up on Instagram if you just said that prayer. I want to help you. I want, I want to equip you to continue walking in this life with Christ. Amen. If you watch this video to the end, thank you. God bless you. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, share this with your friend. If you would like to sow into the ministry, this is my e-transfer right here. Thank you very much for those of you who have been sowing. It's very helpful. The more you keep sowing, the more you're enabling me to go out and continue spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ full time. So thank you for all of you who have been sowing and thank you to those who will be sowing. In the name of Jesus Christ, I love you from the bottom of my heart. Let me, let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for this teaching. I pray, God, that you set these viewers on fire in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that they remain in you. I pray that they keep loving the times that they spend with you in prayer, in the word, in fasting. God, I pray that as they continue seeking you in prayer, I pray that your presence would come so strong on them, Father. I pray that as they continue reading, I pray that you would continue revealing these great mysteries of what you have for us in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that as they continue speaking out your word, as they as they start evangelizing and preaching to their friends and co-workers, I pray that you would soften those hearts and that they would repent. I pray that you would use them in a mighty way. I pray against all plans of the devil. I thank you because no weapon formed against them will prosper. I thank you for the blood. I thank you for keeping us pure. I thank you for keeping us holy. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping us to walk with you. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that we continue growing and growing and we take more time territory from the devil and we we allow that your kingdom to come on this earth your will to be done we surrender everything we are to you father we allow you to use us father we give you full reign full access to our mouths to our minds to our hands to our feet we will obey if you send us we will go in jesus christ my name speak to us father continue speaking to us father continue helping us win the nations continue helping us win our cities continue helping us win our schools continue helping us win the gym place Continue helping us in everything that we do, Father, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we love you. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. All the power is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I love you guys. Thank you. See you in the next video. Ciao.